in the late Cenozoic era, climate was unstable. There were interglacial epochs when it was warmer than it is today, and there was less ice than there is today, and sea level was thus higher than it is today, even six to nine meters higher than it is today. And then this was followed by a periods where temperature is about what it is today, and then times where it got significantly colder in glaciations. And as more and more water was trapped in ice, this could lower sea level by up to 50 meters, and then by the height, even to 70 meters less of uh, sea level uh, because so much water was trapped in ice. Because of human activity, we are currently experiencing a period of climate change where ice, some of which, which has been trapped as ice in glaciers and ice shelves uh, since these glaciations uh, tens if not hundreds of thousands of years ago, this is starting to melt. And in uh, the Arctic, this is now exposing land which was previously frozen, the permafrost. And the unfreezing of these vast tracts of land um, has potential consequences. Much of the land that the ice covered had some sort of vegetation. There were forests, there were grasslands, there were swamps, and thus there's a lot of organic material which did not decay. As the permafrost melts and this area is exposed, there is all of this organic matter which can now decay. Unfortunately, this will return carbon molecules to the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide, which absorbs heat, and methane, which absorbs far more heat. And so, even though the exposing of the permafrost is a consequence of climate change, the release of heat-trapping gases will actually then accelerate climate change. There are other potential side effects as well. Many microbes can live in dormant states where their metabolic rates are very low, and apparently they can survive thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years in these very slow uh, metabolically active states. Some have spores uh, which are capable of uh, being resistant until more favorable uh, environmental conditions present themselves. As a result, the retreat of the permafrost is going to liberate bacteria and viruses, which will then activate and be capable of uh, uh, now forming part of our modern ecosystems with the potential that they could cause new diseases that we have not yet been exposed to. Um, this could apply to you know, plants, to animals. Um, it is even possible that humans who were uh, alive thousands of years ago and their remains have been trapped in ice, it is even possible that some diseases which affect affected early humans would now um, be uh, freed by the retreat of uh, this ice and then be a potential threat to modern populations as well.